that no force on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. The idea of one race, the human race, is an idea whose time has come. We are not going to be able to stop it no matter what they do. They can elect Trump after Trump after Trump and that will not stop the idea that there's only one race on the face of the earth, it's the human race, and we are all members of it. You and I are cousins. Now, if you don't like being my cousin, that's too bad for you. But we are all in the same family. We are members of the family of man. You say that all whites are racist. Can you ex expound on that, please? Any, any white person who was born, raised, and schooled in the United States of America, if you aren't a racist, you're a miracle. Either that or you decided to educate yourself because education in this country is about white is right, brown's all right, black's got to stand back. Yellow's mellow, but whites, we, we educate in a way that says that white males have done all the adventures, have made all the adventures, have done all the discovering, have made all, and everything that is good and has been accomplished has been accomplished according to social studies, which is actually anti-social studies, by white males. It's a lie. But we do that in order to maintain the myth of white superiority. The myth of race has to be maintained at all costs in this country because if white people have to give up the color of their skin as being something that makes them perfect, what do they have left? If we start teaching the truth about history, if we start teaching about Nile Valley contributions to civilization, it will totally change the way we conduct ourselves in the classroom. It will have to. Columbus didn't discover America. You can't discover a place where people are already living, but we celebrate that every October. It's a lie. We need to get over. We we need to stop telling the myths and start telling the truth. Most people will say, "I'm not racist." I'm not a racist. Why? Some of my best friends are black. Right. Yeah. And then you say, "Name one." <laughs> or this one. I don't see color. And when some woman says to me, "I don't see color," I say, "I knew that. If you saw color, you wouldn't dye your hair that way." Or I say, "If you didn't, if you saw color, you wouldn't wear that shirt with those pants." I believe that you don't see color. It's an attempt to deny skin color. And it's attempt, an attempt to deny, what's wrong with seeing the color of my skin? Is it all right for you to see me kind of pink? That's okay for me. I don't mind. I, and I suspect that you don't mind being seen the color you are. You have a right to be what you are. And until people in this country and people in this world get it into their heads that the first modern human beings that evolved on this earth were black women. They evolved in sub-Saharan Africa about 280,000 years ago. And every human being on the face of the earth today runs the has the memory of those black women's genetic structure in their genes. Now, we don't want to admit that, but that's the way it is. And people, as people moved farther and farther from the equator, their bodies produced less and less melanin, so their hair, their skin, and their eyes got lighter. As they moved into the east, they ate a lot of fish and a lot of vegetables, so their skin took on a different tone. I found, I found that out when I was raising little kids. My husband worked in a supermarket. He, had, he was the head of the produce department. And they had lots of oranges that they couldn't sell, so he'd bring them home. And I was feeding my kids orange juice like you never saw in your life. They began to have an orange cast to their skin. I thought they had something, a liver problem. So I took her to the doctor, and she said, what are you feeding these kids? I said, well, lots of orange juice. She said, stop it if you want them to stop being orange. Now, if you think that skin color isn't anything other than the body's natural reaction to the natural environment, get over it. If all white people are racist, according to you, can they be reprogrammed? Of course they can. Of course they can. Of How? course they can be. It's called education. I'm an educator. The word educator comes from the root duck deuce, which means lead, the prefix e, which means out, the suffix ate, which means the act of, and the suffix or, which means one who does. An educator is one who is engaged in the act of leading people out of ignorance. Now, I know you can change them. My, the, second, the second year I did the blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise in my classroom, it was filmed by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. They gave me a copy of that film. I showed it to my father. My father was about 59 years old at the time. He's been a farmer all his life. He raised six, he raised six, seven, six kids, lost one, raised, seven, raised six. Watch that film as a 59-year-old man. When it was over, he stood up, and with tears in his eyes, he took his red handkerchief out of the back pocket of his overalls, his bib overalls, and said, I wish somebody had taught me that when I was nine years old. Nobody had dare say to me, this doesn't work, this is too harsh, this isn't necessary. You can't teach an old dog new tricks because they're wrong. You can teach an old dog new tricks. You can teach people to give up the myth of racism. 
somebody taught the Greeks to give up the myth that the sun was a god in a golden chariot that went across the sky every morning. They believed that for hundreds of years. We have believed the myth of three or four races, different races in this country, for long enough. There's no such thing as reverse racism. You can only be a racist if you have the power to institutionalize what you're doing to people who are different from you. What, you're call what we're calling reverse racism is natural reaction to being treated unfairly on the basis of somebody else's ignorance. Now, don't ever let anybody say to you or about anyone around you that people don't like that person because of the color of their skin. That isn't the reason pe white people don't like people of color. They don't like people of color because they don't understand about skin color. And they don't understand that we all are descendants of somebody who looked like your mother. Welcome back to Breakdown Friday. Joseph Ward, Professor Carl Tone Jones, Patrick Irvin. And we are here to get into a good discussion about what you just saw Jane Elliott talking about. Um, two main things I want to get into, but three things she was talking about, three things that we are going to headline in this. Well, my question is, can white people truly be allies to black people against the system of white supremacy? Jane Elliott said all white people are racist, but there are caveats in there if you really was listening to what she's saying, but we're going to go with that. Are all white people racist? And um, do white people fear black people? Because that was the, the, the thing on the screen was saying white people are afraid of black people. But she was saying um, skin color and things like that. So we, I want to get into these things, get into these concepts, get into these questions. Um, I met Jane Elliott years ago. She came to Tallahassee and she did a... Um, she did her thing. I was able to go up to her afterwards and have a little conversation with her. She liked a little boy dog. You know, she's tough. But as I grew older and I was listening to her and I started learning more about the reality of the world that we live in and how black people truly got into the position that we're in. And recognizing that we didn't have a lot of actual real progress moving forward like there there are some uh i guess you could say symbolic gains but no actual real progress so people in the lane of jane elliott i do think she's made contributions but as i'm listening to her talking about what she's talking about in the clip i'm wondering if she really understands the system of white supremacy truly and also do, do she really believe that because she was saying <clears throat> if white people are educated then you know we, they could be turned around and things could get better but is education enough and are white people really ignorant about the history of black people like not not regular everyday white people i'm talking about white people who really have power White people who really run things, are they really ignorant about the history of black people? And if you do educate the run of the mill everyday black person, how will that influence white people who really have power to give up money, land, power, and resources? So PC, I'm gonna start with you. you seem like, yeah, I said something, you had that look on your face. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Um, so first of all, like, what are your overall thoughts about the clip? I like Jane Elliott for who she is. Um, I think she is, for the most part, sincere. Yeah. But in regards to this whole notion and concept that uh, education alone could eradicate racism, mm, I'm going to have to give that a hard pass. Um you know, white liberals, especially women, they come from this place where they sort of like move the goalpost on what racism is. When I was in college back in 1992, <laughs> and my, as an undergrad, as a freshman, um, one of the things that um, my girlfriend was a big advocate. Like she was one of those big, uh, 
she was an activist mindset. She, you know, um, so there was this organization of students led by um, a white liberal woman uh, on on the campus, and I'm, it's noted she was gay. I just need to throw that out there for the, for this for this example, and. It was a program called Start Students Together Alleviating Racial Tension. The <laughs> well, you know, I went to college in North Central Pennsylvania, so there was a cross burning the first day of school, you know, when the semester started, fall ninety two. There was a cross burning on the um Capitol building steps. Um it was a small cross, but you know, it was It's a cross you know, nevertheless. Cross no. nevertheless, and you had clan rallies that would, you know, come through the town every every year. They would march down. Yeah, they would march down. And at the um, town square, they uh, there was a monument of a Confederate soldier. (laughs) So this is the climate that we're in. So one of the things is they taught us, they tried to teach us to be, um, they tried to teach us to be diversity trainers. Because we would meet people from that area who said that they only had one. Ba- I don't like black people because this one time I went to Burger King and this one black person was rude to me. And you would get story after story after story it's like that. Like, like yeah. one encounter with a black person just cascaded the entire race of black people for these folk. And so, um, and some people say, well, you're the first black person I've ever met. So, but all I know is from TV. And so from that standpoint, I get the ignorance argument. Here's what I'm going to call cap on that. Because just like with Jane Elliott, white people are cool with having this social conversation about eradicating racism. What they're not cool with is when you start talking about dealing with what racism really is, racism, white supremacy the power dynamic of that whole conversation. They're not cool with um, if if it means that they're going to lose access to their privilege. If it means that they're going to have to share power. If it means that they are not in complete control of the distribution of power. This is where you see, this is where the rubber meets the road. Even Jane Elliott and another one like her, Tim Wise, has public, publicly come out vehemently against Black people getting reparations in this country when they were posed with the question. And they gave the same answer that, you know, uh, people who are not supposedly so educated, people who are not so liberal, gave in response to that particular question. The answers they gave where, well, that happened so long ago, and it would be unfair to punish white people today for the sins of their fathers. See, so when you come down to the actual question of can white people be allies, they could be allies in terms of translating things into their community. They can go back to their community and try to reform races. But let's, let's be real about this. Just like we have that conversation Right. And it's not even equating the two uh, where you have, you know, a touchy feely uncle that everybody knows about that people keep away from the kids during family gatherings. But he's still allowed to come to family gatherings. You have the same dynamic going on in the houses of white supremacists. Where is I'm not as racist as Charlie, but Charlie gets to come to Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I like the cliffhanger, but we because I want to I want to come back specifically to can white people be allies because I, I want to give us some time on that. That's why I okay. mean I want to highlight. But you know, um, so I like the cliffhanger in this, but you know, just overall, before we get to the like your your thoughts on the on the clip. So, um, so I, did I cut you off? Are you done? No, no I'm right. I'm good. Okay, I'm good. okay, okay. Just making sure. All right, um, Pat. What are your overall thoughts on this clip? And I'm asking because you're both of y'all first time seeing it. So overall thoughts on the clip. Uh, I 
disagree with most of it. <laughs> I tried to find a like creative, sophisticated way to say it, but I, I nothing came. Oh yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. yeah, I disagree with most of it. Um, theoretically, it sounds, but like what PC was getting at, the practical application of it is not there. There's no evidence of it being there, and she's operating from a safe space, being a white woman. Now, one could say she sacrificed a lot. <laughs> To achieve what, you know, what what little semblance of social justice she achieved. And I wouldn't argue with that. But I would also say that she's still in a better position as an old white lady than I am as a younger black man. So, you know, there's, there's still... Go ahead. Well, and I would give her her credit. To her credit, she understands that and she will vocalize that. Right, right, right. And th none of this is an attack on her. Right, right, right. No, I'm just yeah. I'm just making sure that people understand that. And like, and I'm glad you said that because we're not attacking her. But what we are saying is just kind of putting some thought to these things, because like, as you're saying, she's coming from an aspect of being in theory as well. So, but my bad. Right, right, right. And, and so for her, it's also coming from a position of power. And when the rubber meets the road, like, you know, I'm glad PC mentioned Mr. Wise, but, you know, like. A couple of them in that arena um when it's time to actually apply that pressure uh they back off you know are they seeing a different tune and it's not even to me it's not even that they're uh reneging on what they're saying it's just they have a different vantage point because they're not black so as black people we shouldn't be looking now jane elliott is one of the few people that i think is honestly genuine in her yeah. desire to create yeah. change her perspective is just that of somebody that's in the group the power group right so you gotta wonder how much she can really see even if she's trying um whereas with mr wise and a couple others i do question the authenticity of their <laughs> desires to create change. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was a lot in that clip. Like, theoretically, I agree with a lot of it. Um, but, well, I can't even say that. I agree with a lot of her concepts. A lot of what she said in that clip, I disagree with. I don't think uh, racism is because they don't understand skin color. I don't right. buy that. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily somebody that agrees uh, with the idea that all modern humans evolved from uh, sub-Saharan Africa. I I used to think that. This is my personal view. Now I think that there were multiple pockets of people developing all over the globe. You had the Neanderthals happening up there um, on the other side of the Caucasus. You had the Denisovans happening over there in Asia. You had pockets of humans developing all over the place. Now, did the first crop of modern homo sapiens appear in africa yes they did but when they started to migrate they started to mate with these other people and we started to have different groups popping up and we also don't know if other groups show so that's neither here nor there but it's just another point that i disagree with because from the standpoint that i am i think that that was an attempt to try to link her to black women I'm, my bad, man. I just had the thought of a, like an early Homo sapien trying to holler at a Neanderthal. <laughs> but, but, hey, because <laughs> you ain't shit. Uh. But, hey. <laughs> but we know it happened. Like we know for a fact that it happened. Early yeah, this was fucking everything. Like we know it happened. Like we don't know if it yeah. was intentional or if it was whatever. Yeah. But we yeah. know it happened. Yeah, so, man, we we, um, we see it every day in Kensington here in Philly, so. <laughs> So, and I do, but I do think a lot of it is, even if it's not intentional, I think there is a lot of like figuring out what group you need to cater to, to placate, to get access, and then hitting that needle on the head. And I think people know that in the black community is black women. So I think that that's kind of the angle a lot of them are taking. Now, again, I'm not saying it's nefarious or anything like that. Could also just be that Jane Fonda is a woman. But we also know that Jane, uh, Elliot, my Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. Damn, you see how that worked? <laughs> I'm thinking about Jane Fonda. Anyways, we also know that the workout lady was. <laughs> we also know that Jane. Um, Elliot, we also yeah. know that Lucy. 
the uh-huh. woman, the 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 early, the earliest thing that they used to try to say was a modern human, right? Like we also know that that wasn't a modern human. Um, and we also know that it's always required male and females to procreate. What that? What that? Let's see that. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I can bring it in and land right there because I can go on for a whole show about everything she said that I don't necessarily agree well, with. Well, on, on that point, there, you know, um, I, I'm sure Lucy had parents. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Lucy had parents. Lucy herself was a parent. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, I think, I think a lot of things she said for black people. It needs to be seen in the in context and in in a lens that is appropriate for us. So it needs to be translated to see if it fits black people and how we can actually use the information that she's given. Because I agree, I think that she is genuine. I I do think that she um is out to make things right, to help to make a better society. I do, but I also agree with what you said. It's coming from her perspective as an older white woman versus our perspective of the group of people who are affected by white supremacy. And so, especially with us three, the amount of research and information that we've been able to come across for the past 20 years and then being able to talk amongst ourselves but other people and gain new concepts about race and racism and how white supremacy has affected black people over the years. So I hear what she's saying, but a lot of it is in theory, because like you're saying, um, if white people learn history, I don't, I believe the white people who are in power already know our history. That's one of the reasons why they're still in power. And so who are the white people that need to learn history? Right there, right? And also, if those white people who are in power, if they do learn our history and other white people learn our history, would that be enough for the white people who are in power? And I'm saying that specifically because we're not talking about the everyday white person. We're talking about white people who are in power, who have the power, who have been reinforcing the power this long, this whole time, right? If they are, let's assume they are ignorant of African history. If they are educated about African history, how will that contribute to them doing an equal redistribution of money, wealth, power, land, and resources? Because we have to look at it in a realistic lens, not in a theoretical or an ideal lens. Mm -hmm. Ideally, people can be educated and once they're educated, conditions change. Now, we know that doesn't work because we've seen it doesn't work on us. Like, let's just be real. How many black people, how many, I mean, how many scores of black people have come through who know who can rattle off black history off the back of their hand, like the back of their hand? But where's the real progress? Where's the real change? Where's the real empowerment that's coming from this? Like we've been, like we've said multiple times, it takes more than that. It takes more than just education to stop a machine, to stop a system. We got to realize systematic racism also comes with an army. Mm-hmm. They didn't, white people didn't come to power through political debate and protesting and stuff like that. They came to power because they kick people's asses. Mm -hmm. So if (laughs) it took arms to get power, it's going to take arms to take power. Let's just be real. But can, I'm going to start with you, Pat. Can white people be allies to black people and fighting the system of white supremacy? Can they truly be allies? No, no. Explain. So, in order to be an ally, right, there has to be a level of understanding, 
right? There has to be a shared goal, a shared purpose, a shared benefit. So when you say white people, in my mind, you're talking about the collective, mm -hmm. a group of them. Mm -hmm. Um, why would they cooperate? What benefit do they get out of it? What do they gain from it? Because again, this goes back to the point PC brought up initially, right? The initial point that he made was when rubber meets the road. Where you gonna be at? How are you right. gonna be John Brown? Because to me, John Brown is the standard, but you know, that just so we're saying that white people would be okay with the redistribution of their power to right. other people with no benefit to them that's and that's why i keep being specific. that's why i'm intentional with what i'm saying how i'm saying it right i'm i mean you know pc go ahead man <laughs> i'm was just quick. saying we we saw it back in 2020 when when white folk thought that they were losing like man does anybody forget january 6th Yep. That was white folk feeling like they were losing their privilege and losing their country. To who? I have no freaking idea. But <laughs> white, they were playing, listen, man, they went to war against their own country. They were kidnapping governors. They were um, planning hostage takeovers, uh, municipal buildings. They were getting into shootouts in the woods with federal officers, destroying public property. You had the whole Clive and Bundy ran situation prior to that. Um, no, hell no. They don't feel that way. Um, when I was speaking earlier, though, I said we can use, you know, that could be a mouthpiece, but it has to go happen in their backyard. There's nothing they could do in terms of like, because when you start, like you said, when you start talking about white folk feeling like they lose anything, you had a white girl down in Texas, Texas University, who, uh, who sued Texas University for affirmative action because she couldn't get into college. You just had a big push to remove affirmative action on a collegiate level in terms of stat or student quotas um, in how many different states? So, you know, um, when we think, no, they, they can't, they, they, white people will burn this burn this mother down before they split any lose any lose access to anything that's why i said that you know jane elliott you know and she got famous for the brown eye blue eyes experience experiment that she did in her classroom the day after martin luther king was assassinated but that was all skin deep it that when you start talking like you know if you're in a room full of like college students, like I am most of the time, they can get along famously. Different races, different backgrounds, famously. Because there's no fight for the resources in the room. Right. If there was, you know, only a certain group can eat snacks in the room and the other group had to go out and buy their own food. And if you had a group that only, you know, y'all get free water, everybody else has to drink out the bathroom, faucet and it would be a problem. <laughs> conditions. People's conditions create different types of behaviors and responses. And and black people have to understand something too. We weren't brought to this country to be treated fairly by the dominant class who socially engineered this society. Black we just happen to be left over from it's like if you're making a cake and you have the ingredients and the main cogs and the ingredients that go into the cake and you have some batter left over at the end. Where the batter left over at the end? The cake is in the oven baking. And, and from the standpoint of America's perspective, I'm not talking about our value as black people. I'm just saying our value as Americans. You know, um, we weren't supposed to be here. We weren't right. supposed to, outside of building this country with uh, the free labor of our ancestors, and the, the genius that our ancestors brought here, you know, outside of that um, service that we were, that we provided, that was provided, we weren't supposed to be here to reap those benefits and approve it after the Civil War and Reconstruction, when Black people started building up their own townships across the country, 
we want to we focus a lot on the race riots and and the race the racial violence that our ancestors fought. We keep forgetting about the homestead acts that were given the whites to expand westward. We keep forgetting about the um, international call to bring skilled laborers from Ireland, from Italy, from from Britain to America, from Spain to America, because they didn't want to have to, to hand those skilled labor positions over to the ones who the blacksmiths that um, that came from our community that were Africans here in America that that were building up towns out of nowhere and, and, and becoming economically challenging to the white counterparts across town. They see if white folk could have done that, white people can't even leave black people alone who become prosperous in America. Like I'm over here in my plot in my land, I'm building it up. You down the street, you're mad because you don't have the ingenuity that I have to build this up. You thought you stripped everything from me, access to everything, and I'm still able to build it up. So now you get around your people, and now y'all creating lynch mobs. Let's not forget the model for eugenics. Eugenics was created by uh, Francis Galton. Um, who happened to be, I forget his name, uh, evolution guy, his cousin, right? Uh, but, Darwin. Yeah, Charles Darwin. They were cousins. But the actual practice of eugenics, the eugenic society was here in America. Hitler learned how to be a eugenicist and a mass genocidal maniac from what was going on here in America during the Jim Crow era and the, the um, and all the different things that was happening to black people through anger from these same white folk that, that could have been outlaws. As George Wallace once said, the government of Alabama during the Jim Crow era, black people and poor whites ever got together, they would run this country. But poor whites hated being black more than they hated being poor. But great ending, because it helped, it's right going. To, so can white people be allies? I admit that's a broad question. You know, um, white people with real power, they have, like like you said, PC, like you said, Pat, they have no interest and no need to become allies to us because they have the power. Why would they give up their power? For what? What's the purpose? Now, white people who don't have power, I think you have a number of white people who don't have power who want to be allies, who want to help who may have good intentions, but they have no power. So they can't really help us because they have no power. And like you just said now, if if poor whites and black people would have gotten together, you know, could they really have run the country? Maybe, I, I don't know, but putting two people together who have no power, those people will have to accumulate power over time. And if you accumulate power over time, then you may be able to shake some things up. But you're going against a superpower with no power. And so I think we have to we have to really think about that realistically when we're talking about allies. Um, like which group of and, and specifically white people as allies. So which group of white people would actually be on our side and an even further question, which group of white people can actually help us and are willing to actually help us rather than have the idea of, you know, I'm 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 down for ending racism. You remember going, we said this before, said again, going back to what Frederick Douglass talked about and what Malcolm X talked about with abolitionists and liberals. Yeah, you want to go ahead. Well, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. Let's not forget that John Brown died at the hands of other white folks. So he, he stabbed <laughs> right. <laughs> and like I've known white folks to actually step out on the limb. Now they had like black children, you know, so they had more of an incentive than the standard white American. But I've seen how the community will come down on white people. I mean, I remember during the um, Zimmerman, George Zimmerman um, trial for killing Trayvon Martin. When Zimmerman was exonerated, there was a white woman that I knew 
and she would send me a message like she would send me inboxes and text messages saying i feel so horrible about this and i said well why don't you post it on your page because i see all your allies out there you know um telling black people you know now that it's over that we need to shut up and she said well if i did that i would be ostracized from my community and i can't afford to do that they have a culture and and, and with the, and, and see we talk about culture all the time and black people we just think we can wing it we think we we don't like the rules and regulations that come with culture so because we feel as though somehow some way a culture is going to hold me back and <laughs> But we see other people fall back on their culture. They're doing just fine. They well, seem to find ways out of it and build. And, you know. I think we can make this real easy, too. All right. Let's use Tallahassee as an example, the state of Florida. But Tallahassee, the capital city of Florida. And I use that because we have a mayor who liberal. Have a liberal mayor of Tallahassee because we're a blue city. We're a blue city in a, in a sea of red. So our mayor is liberal, but the governor is conservative. The mayor, we've seen the mayor do stuff for black people. Cool. We accept it. We like it. Who has more real power? The mayor of Tallahassee or the governor of the state of Florida? And the ideologies fit. The ideology of the mayor goes more toward I, could, I would be an ally to black people. The ideology of the governor goes more toward we want to maintain our power structure. Who has more power? The governor of Florida or the mayor of Tallahassee? Who can, who can if, if they actually really wanted to help us, who could help us better? If they actually really wanted to harm us, who could harm us better? It's, it's right there. We already know the answer to that. Everybody hate them. The Santis has more power than the gov than the mayor of Tallahassee. But the ideologies fit. The ideology of the mayor is more liberal, the more toward, hey, at least I will look like I'm helping black people. At least I'm looking like I'm for black people. The ideology of the governor is we maintaining this power structure. And why can he say we're maintaining this power structure? Because they already have power. We have to acquire power if we really want to push back against white supremacy. It has to be more than just rhetoric. It has to be more than just education. Education has to be coupled with power. And yes, there are some white people who can be down for the cause, but to be a true ally, to be a true ally, we need you to have some power. Well, and look, go ahead, Pat. No, no, no ahead. I was going to say, they, um, and that point you just made even goes into the conversation about the civil war states rights who has more power um cities states or the federal government you know this is like this is a long term like the avenues and the groundwork for this have been on repeat for years for decades for centuries are we just not looking at we're just not looking at what's being displayed can an individual white person be somebody with a strong desire to help and even, even take steps to help yes. black people? Sure. Yeah. An individual. But can you call an individual? Like if you're calling an individual an ally to a group, that kind of says everything that needs to be said right there. <laughs> right. 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 Like, you're, you're an outcast to the group that is the oppressors. Well, yeah, but more so, ruggedly individualist, you don't win going up against systems. You, you don't win going up against, um, you, don't, you don't win going up against institutions. You have to have your own institutions to help balance that out. The, the power struggle and we bro they, we they, have, taught us, yeah. they taught us so, this in the bug's life go watch a bug's life well, the bugs they were able to to have a, a successful revolt eventually when they put the power pieces together 
You have to have power to match power. It's just that simple. My bad. No, 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 no. You, 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 you got to have power. And power is not something that's infinite. So if you look at power, it's like looking at a pie. The more power you have, the less power somebody else has. Um, and the more reluctant they're to give up their piece of the pie. They'll fight you over it. They'll kill you over it. Some don't have to give. Yeah. So, so, and what I found with black people is we're not, we've had the fight beaten out of us. So we posture, we pontificate, we can articulate long, you know, extinguishing, extinguishing arguments and so forth. But for the most part, we don't, we don't really want to fight. Because the things we would have to do to fight would mean sacrificing some of the luxuries we already have. And a lot of us don't want to give that up. If I Listen, right here, right now, if you say, listen, black people, give up your access to the internet so that we can go and build our own structure. You will have black people coming back to you saying, what, 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 good, is that, what good is that going to do? Like, why would I even think about doing that? Like, like and you would have to give them you would have to expend so much energy in terms of trying to convince them to sacrifice anything and i just do the internet out there it could be anything it could be your car it could be your fancy phones it could be anything um but i'm talking about things that should be insignificant in terms of if you're trying to build something greater right we won't do that so Think about the allegiance we're talking about. We are not organized to even be in a place where if somebody was to come in, we would be able to utilize them. We would be absorbed into their power structure, which is what you consistently see when black people call themselves aligning with these other groups. Well, well, and to that point, we've said this in past shows, but said again, if white supremacy was to end today, Asians would be the new superpower in the world. So where will we fit? And remember, if white supremacy ends today, we are totally dependent upon this system. So who, what system will we be dependent upon next? The system that's in power, which would be the Asians. And here's the wild part. And I'm going to let Pat get in. I know Pat is jumping at, chopping at the bit. But just like you said, we're not prepared. So... I've seen so many black people celebrating the possibility of the the gold dinar taking over as the primary um, financial, um, the global uh, currency, right? Um, Oil-based currency, gold-based currency, so forth. If that happens, we don't have a backup system in America if the dollar collapses for black people. Right. We don't have a bartering system. We don't have uh, <clears throat> any shelters put in place. We don't have stocks of supplies to give out rations. We don't have any of that stuff. We're not even thinking about that. Just emotionally charged by the fact that America might fall. Well, if America was a ship, you're on the bottom level. Duh. If the ship starts sinking, we die first. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of like the ally question you got to start thinking deep about this stuff it we sounds get to the point where, where we're organized to even be in a place to dictate how our allies respect us because just like you said jane elliott like a pit bull that means if you go to talk to jane elliott she's talking to you from a place of authority she's yeah. not intaking anything from you and right. you're the one going through the experience. Right. This is what it means when white folks step into the room of black issues and concerns, they automatically believe that they're the authority or they have some authority. They don't believe that they're guests in our house. They come in like they own the place and we treat them like they own the place. Hey. Because they do own the place. Exactly. See, I mean... But we, we've been having these conversations, like, even when we talk about, um, when we talk about the abolitionists, when everybody was talking about uh, 
you know the the what was it uh the freedom movement what was it uh F free wall street what was it the oh, wall street yeah. joint um oh, yeah. <laughs> it started with the wall street joint then it expanded um you know like all of these movements where white people come oh, up occupy wall street occupy wall street okay like all of these movements that I've studied, and I study most of them because I find movements to be fascinating. When it's time, when they turn their attention to black folk, the black folk usually vanish. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we need to really pay. Like allies to what? That needs to be the like people are like they 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 white people can be our ally. Allies to what? We know what white people can do. What can we do? Why would they? What are what? Are, what are they allying with? <laughs> I, I I I ask that question all the time, and I'm I'm always asking black people, why would somebody be an ally to us? Like why would why would other groups of people put out their resources to be an ally to us when we can't be a good ally back to them? You align because. Think about it. Even even just in in regular human relationships. Think about one of the sayings black people use. I've been using it. If if we can't win, we can't be friends. So, all right. Would you go be friend like in a professional setting to do some business? Would you be friend and, and make a an, an allegiance with somebody who don't have their stuff together and can't help you? Would you do that? No. So once again, like Pat said, why would somebody align themselves with Black America, knowing that Black America can't be an ally back to them at this current point? And and to what end? Because Black people don't, we don't need allies right now. We're not even at that level. Like, you know, like I, I tell the kids that I work with on critical thinking, I give you a level three problem to solve because you at level two. And you trying to be at level five to solve it. You ain't, it's a whole bunch of steps in there. You ain't equipped to think the way you trying to think to solve this simple ass problem. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with, with, with the community is like, you still, we still trying to farm and you trying to create a whole food industrial complex with machines and all this other stuff that's going to generate uh, artificially created crops. You don't even know how to put it in the dirt yet. What, what are we doing? You 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 not on the right level for the conversation you have it. And that's not just like people individual. That's the community. The community is not on the right level to be talking about who we gonna ally with. We don't even have structures that would give whoever chooses to ally with us a platform to communicate with the people that they would need to communicate with in order to be effective allies. Like there is no, like who would they talk to? What would they talk about? What's the game plan that they would be helping bring to fruition? The, like these are fundamental questions. What's the end goal? For who, where, when, why? You learn these questions in English. Like we can't even, like what yeah. so, Ally for who, for what, for when, for where, for why, and how. All right. So, all right. So we got that. Cause, and, and I thought of that question because I'm looking at Jane Elliott and other white people like her who are in the lane of working to seem like they're in the lane of working to help in the system white supremacy. So at least fight it on some degree. So that's why I came up with that. But I also came up so we can really put stuff in perspective about what allegiances really are. And how they truly work and how it's a two-way street so the next question is because jane elliott was saying all white people are racist but she because the question my question is all right are are all white people racist but she answered that question um i don't know i don't know if she was she intentionally said it but she said it in the beginning and then in the toward the end when the guy asked her how can you uh, teach people to not be racist or, or how can you reprogram people she was like through education but she was saying white people can be racist but white people can be reprogrammed through education 
And so, um, inherent are all white people like inherently racist? PC, you got that look on your face. Yeah, and <laughs> all white people are race first. And here's the part that black folk ain't gonna like. I don't mind that they are. They're well, supposed but, to be race first. Well, okay, because but being race first and racist are not the same. Right. But their way of protecting their race first makes them racist. And, and so white folk understand the privilege that come with being white. They're not giving that up to you. The only time I've seen white folk give up that type of privilege is when a girl likes a guy and then there's no money involved. She just likes him. And she happens to be white and he happens to be black. But, 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 but when those girls are pressed by their own families, they're either ostracized or they come back to the fold. And you don't hear no more about them out there mingling with the, with, with the colors. And I'm talking about, so we're just talking about on the base level, right? We're not even talking about the institutional worship or the institutional ideologies or functionalities of it all. White folk are protecting their whiteness because they understand, as Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said, that they are a global minority. They understand that they have to, have to fight to maintain being in power. They have to. If white folk decided today or tomorrow to be liberal, their whiteness literally may be wiped out of existence. Genetically speaking, we know it's possible. They, they also understand the power dynamic of how they get along with people in the world and the only reason they're seen that way. So they understand that by they, they, the only thing that protects them is the, is the privilege and the reinforcement of their white power in the white power structure um and they play to it like i said even the most docile liberal white folk when you press them on on, on conversations concerning race when you see them in the work environment and, and and see how they fully adapt and accept their privilege where they're the last one hired and the first one elevated or the first one that gets a, a promotion they <laughs> Um, they don't turn down those bank loans that black people who are more qualified for get turned down from. They don't turn, they, they know which neighborhoods to move into, why they're moving into those neighborhoods. They know when to move to their side of the tracks and they know when to move into your community to gentrify it. They're not trying to stop it. They, so, so even if they're not actively involved in protecting their privilege passively, their silence endorses it. Pat, are all white people inherently racist? Or do all white people practice racism? Um, it's a good question for a philosophical debate. But in practical application, it doesn't matter because it displays the same. You know what I'm saying? And if we're trying to have a practical conversation, well, yes, they're all racist because that's how it displays. Now, is each individual actually looking down their nose at black people? No, that's not that's not the case. But culturally, it displays in a way that says they're all racist, because if it comes down to me and you, I'm better than you. And I don't think that that's just the white people thing. I think all people are inherently for their group. Right. Unless their process is right in some kind of way. And by that, I don't mean they're mentally whatever. I mean, unless something gets in the way of their natural organic development, that is the way people develop. That's group psychology. My group is my group. I fuck with my group. Fuck your group. If you fuck with my group, I'm going to fuck your group. That's the way the shit works. Um, It's not until you're in a group that is inferior that you start singing all this kumbaya shit 
Come on, guys. Mm-hmm. We're all humans. We're all one race. You saying that from a position of weakness. Because if you was in their shoes, you'd be doing what they do. You know how we know? Because you did it. That's how we know. And even on an individual level, you give a Negro some power and you watch them step on their own people. We see you doing it individually. Now, some people say, well, we learned that from the white people. Okay, we did learn certain behaviors, certain ways, certain specifics about how to be but, vicious humans from white people. Yeah, yeah. But make no mistake, the viciousness is there on its own. Well, I, I, I keep saying conquering, humans conquering other is more natural to human beings than we want to admit. Right. So, so... One thing I think we got to understand is that can education fix it? Yes. Are the structures in place for education to fix it? No. And me saying education can fix it is purely theoretical because that's also from the understanding that education is shaped by and dictates and propagates culture. And culture should protect groups from other groups and from their own baser instincts that will cause them to self-destruct. I firmly believe that culture is in the, uh, I believe it was Dr. Marimba Ani who first said it's a, it is an immune system. Mm -hmm. Culture is there to protect us from our natural inclinations for self-destruction as human beings. So could culture protect us from that? Yes question becomes how do you develop that culture in a world where as pc said power is a zero-sum game those that have it aren't going to give it up those that want it don't know how to create more of it and you have this dynamic because to create that culture you would have to lower the priority of accumulating and holding power you would have to be willing to say Other groups are equal to my group, and I'm willing to share power. Show me one civilization in human existence. That's not how humans work. Yeah, like that's that that doesn't. So, in practical application, no, education can't fix it. But in theory, and that goes into like we said, everything about what she said. Theoretically, sure, practical Uh, application. It's like the Umar Johnson shit. Yeah, I'm bring him up. When and you got everybody talking about uh we need black men to go into the communities and take care of these women and ch- yeah, theoretically that works, but when you think about it practically and lay out logistically, how would that flow? You quickly real and that's a three minute conversation when you start getting in the specifics. Oh, this shit ain't gonna work. <laughs> I think we all need to start having three minute conversations about specifics before we say shit. But- well, that, and that's why we have these breakdowns so we can make sure we are critically thinking because I'm kind of in the build on to what both of you are saying. Are all white people inherently racist? All white people come up in the system of white supremacy. All white people benefit from the system of white supremacy and all white people can choose to um, uphold the system of white supremacy at any point in time than they want. Um like you were saying, getting more specific. White people, once again, white people who have the power. If you were just, if you were just going to say blank out racist people, white people who have the power and are continuing to maintain the system of white supremacy, we don't have to ask about that. We shouldn't have to ask about them. We know they are. They're main. They're literally maintaining the system of white supremacy. So they're by their their actions. They're they're racist by their actions that maintain the system of white supremacy. The white people who don't have power can choose to uphold the system if they want to. And we do see that a lot of them make that choice. So getting down to, like you said, Pat, every individual, can we can we point to every individual white person, say every individual white person is a is a practicing racist a practicing racist no we can't but i don't think that we need to be looking 
at white people who don't have power. That's it. And, I, and that's one of the main things that came up in my head when I first saw this video is we're talking about everyday white people, though. Once again, in order for everyday white people to help us, they have to have power. And so the everyday white person has to get that real power from the white people who are really in place. And the best way to do that is to fall in line. But you're not going to fall in line to take the power away from the white people. You're going to fall in line to keep the system maintained. So it's that the structure is there, the, the culture is there, it's it's everything is there for white people to just fall in line and take take advantage of it. And that's easy. You have more white people doing that than white people bucking against the system. There, there aren't a lot of Jane Elliott's out there. And once again, also I want to say this: just because a white person says it doesn't mean it's true, or doesn't mean that we should run with it as well. So Yeah, that's how. I, <laughs> that's it. We out. We would have shot our load. <laughs> but I, I, and I think we have though, because um, originally I was thinking that this may be a longer video. But as we got to talking, and I started realizing, well, because I have a whole lot of points on my page, but we went through all these points as we were you know matriculating through the video but to be we have to be practical and realistic about how we are coming up with solutions to better our situation and when other people are talking about our situation and coming up with ideas and solutions that could possibly help or hurt us we need to evaluate everything with a keen eye because great intentions, you know, help pave the road to hell. And if we are serious about changing our situation, will be something I say every week, but if we're serious about it, then we have to be realistic. We have to be practical. We have to be realistic. Get from the ideal stage. Can't manifest ourselves out of, out of the system of white supremacy. You have to be realistic, though. Um, Yes, education is a piece of it, but we can, once again, we can see that white people who are in power are fully educated about who we are and where we come from. Remember, they came and got us, so they know who we are and where we come from. Like, in order to maintain this power, don't you have to monitor and study the people? Like, we have, we have full evidence that white people have literally studied black people African people from every scientific angle that you can think of. A lot of these, once again, we keep saying a lot of these sciences were created by studying black people. So they know us through and through. They know us better than we know us because they studied us. So that alone would not help in the system of racism or white supremacy. That won't just make somebody not be racist. If they're not willing to give up land, power, money, wealth, and resources, what we talk about. So, yeah. <laughs> Joseph Ward, <clears throat> Professor Carlton Jones, Patrick Irvin. Remember, FetLifeStation.com. Go listen to the brother. He always dropping gems. FetLifeStation.com. And we're going to keep this thing rolling. Support, support, support this channel. We're almost at 50K. We're almost at 50K. Let's push to 50K. Want to get to 50K by the end of the year, before the end of the year. Matter of fact, before the end of the month. Help me get to 50K before the end of the month. Let's keep running these views up. Let's keep running these likes up, these comments and everything. And let's just keep this thing going on the shows of Giants. Our mission is to put the pieces of the puzzle together. We're not trying to make nobody like us. But the mission is to put the pieces of the puzzle together to make it easier for us to understand what has happened to us and how to move forward and rectify our situation. Because they spilled the milk, but we got to clean it up. We out.